G'day friends and foes, RJ here with RJ's This Is Not Legal Advice. This is episode 153 and I've entitled it Where Is Lucky Lance and How Was Your Australia Day? So, it's a bit noisy here, maybe I should go for a walk. So I'm just here, I'll show Pavel Avenue. So this is Surfers Paradise Beach. You got the famous Surfers Paradise sign. They used to have uh, golden bikini ladies, and then also Warwick Capo was there for a while too. Uh, so you know, bikini man. Yeah, maybe I'll switch the camera around. Uh, so you know, I guess you could say Warwick Capo had a man bikini, but it wasn't like Borat style one. You've got all these lifeguard towers every so often too which is really cool makes me think of like Baywatch that kind of thing you know Pamela Anderson can jump off the off the tower onto the sand running with a little red floaty thing and a little red bikini something like that but anyway so uh, there's a few people on now so how was your Australia day do you celebrate it do you think it's invasion day or conquering day or whatever instead uh, hi Paul yeah I wonder how old Pamela Anderson is now I'm not sure but getting on it's been a while since she was famous after her Baywatch career for her video with her former husband as well so that's interesting and what did I do for Australia Day? Not much so far. So one of my friends uh, was in hospital. Uh, she had anaphylaxis, so we had to look after her kitties. And then, and by not much, I mean not much as in like celebration-wise. No barbecues or anything like that. Then we went to the, what is it? Broadwater Parklands, or just technically it's still that for that particular area, uh, basically to the beach, and there was a little autistic girl, age three, named Nova, uh, and I found that out afterwards. And basically, she was at the beach and was drowning, and I saved the little girl's life. So that was one good deed for the day and that's also interesting too because when I was about three or four uh, my family they used to have race horses and we had a massive horse pool so not like a standard you know six foot deep pool uh, it was I don't know, probably three meters four meters deep something like that and I was drowning when I was about three or four and uh, one of my brothers saved me from drowning so I guess in the universe Kind of thing I just repaid the favor but it was also really weird that well probably won't get into that but anyway uh, so now I'm here at Surfers Paradise and my question for this video is where has Lucky Lance or Lance Lee Simon disappeared to because I did note a few weeks ago that he had a criminal charge pending and this was well before he made a video saying that he's got uh, IVOs which is like an AVO uh, applications against him but this is not a IVO criminal application and then that was listed I think from memory for the 2nd of April for the first mention so what a mention is is you know you go there uh, or an arraignment and they say you're guilty not guilty that kind of thing and then if the person's guilty or not guilty usually they come back for sentencing if they're guilty anyway depending on how busy the court is and also it gives people an opportunity or further opportunity to provide information why they should get a lesser penalty so mitigating circumstances like oh you know uh, 
I don't know, someone says their spouse left them or something like that, and, you know, one would hope that they're not lying to the court because that would be perjury, but, you know, there's certain mitigating circumstances. If someone's really young and they commit an offence, but they're still over the age where you can be held criminally responsible, uh, which is in Dolly Puxus, uh, so... You know some places in the world might make that nine even if it's like maybe a Middle Eastern country but uh, if they're 10 or 12 it just depends on the jurisdiction but you know a little kitty could murder someone and get away with it if they're under that age and then there's another age gap so just say that's you know 0 to 12 as an example and then there's another age gap uh, and that has a presumption of innocence, but if someone can prove that, you know, a kitty intentionally killed someone and they appreciated the gravity of the situation, then they can be charged. But then you have, you know, for people 16 and over, basically, uh, again, depends on jurisdiction. There are people watching from around the world, believe it or not, on my videos. But anyway, so... With Lance, the uh, criminal charge, uh, the mention of it, uh, and I mean mention as in where it's listed in a special place, that that disappeared. And then Lance hasn't apparently posted since about 19 February or something like that. Uh, and then, you know, even was wondering if he was okay but then today just before I went to do this video and it sort of rubbed off on my hand uh, when I saved the little girl but I did uh, recheck and it's now listed for I think that's the 19th of April I just wrote it on my hand but it's sort of faint the camera actually picks it up better than my eyes. Uh, so I think it's either 19th or 17th of April. And perhaps people want to ask Lance what the matter is for number case number K131503900. So that's K131503900. So, you know, perhaps people can ask him what that's about. I'll just wait until, like, noisy cars go past. Some kind of sports car, sedan, or a couple of them, actually. Might be SS Commodores or something. We've got an old-fashioned Holden behind there as well. Like a 1990s, 1980s version, maybe. Very boxy. Anyway, so... Uh, it's good that it's re-showing the case, uh, but apparently with a different date, because, you know, there wouldn't be many things besides perhaps death that they would have a case and then all of a sudden it disappears, uh, because it hasn't even had the first mention. So, at least apparently he's okay, uh, even though he's not a very good person in my experience. But, you know, I still care how people are. And we've still got a family and whatever as well. Anyway, so what did everyone else do for Australia Day? Uh, hi, Lisa, as well. Thank you. Yeah, so Paul says, Happy Australia Day, a time to celebrate our lovely country, mate. Yeah, so, you know, it really is a thing to bring people together or can be used to bring people together and I do believe that a lot of the people who are very vocal about change your date and invasion day etc that they don't really care what day of the year it is they just want to get rid of it and it doesn't matter what you call it because most countries have a national day of some kind but obviously if people support their nationality, then that makes it a lot harder for people to dissolve all the countries in the world and to make a one world government. 
or a new world order or whatever way you want to call it so you know if you have friends that say change your date you know while you're celebrating the first fleet blah 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 then perhaps ask them if they would be happy if it would be on the 4th of april as an example you know my birthday or is my birthday offensive uh, I guess it probably is because, uh, well, to a lot of people, we can make some jokes about that, but, uh, you know, the point is that they just want to get rid of National Days because it goes against their interests in international communism, something like that. And then, of course, you have the leaders that plan these things, and then you have the vast bulk of people that just follow it and fall for the rhetoric if that makes sense so if you have you know you got a friend and they're genuinely pissed off about something then you know sometimes people take that on board and make that their own mission as well and they're like you know oh you know yeah i've got a mate and they're really affected by whatever you're talking about at the particular time and you know unfortunately they fall for it if you know what I mean as in blindly follow without exercising their own judgment that kind of thing and it reminds me of in the early days of YouTube uh, what was his name David Icke was it David Icke I think so uh, my mind's a bit blank at the moment but anyway, he uh, became quite popular on YouTube. This was like 2006, 2007, 2005, whatever, uh, in the very early days of YouTube. And he had an interesting story. And it went something like this. His wife, every Christmas, used to chop the corners off the turkey or the ham or something like that. And one day he asked her, why do you do that you know every Christmas you just chop away chunks of the ham or turkey whatever it was uh, I'll just call it ham for the sake of the story and you know you just chuck it away or whatever why do you do that and she said oh well that's how you cook turkeys or hams uh, and he said oh what I've never heard of that before uh, before uh, seeing you doing it at least uh, so where did that information actually come from she said oh well my mum always used to do it so that's obviously how you do it you know it must be to make it cook even or something like that and then he said why don't you ask your mum and she ended up asking her mum and her mum said oh you know that's because we had a very small oven so we couldn't fit the full size turkey or ham whatever it was in there but it was the interesting thing about culture and conformity. It's like when, also when you're in high school, that you know the cool kids wear their ba their backpack on one shoulder and then also stuff their bag full of textbooks, even ones they don't need for the day, just to show how cool they are for men at least, uh, young men, boys, whatever. Helicopter going by, and. I'll just wait until it goes by in case it's buggering up the audio. I don't know if it is or not. But... Someone just flew a little toy and landed in. That's... She doesn't see. Just like, here you go, it's here. Oops, sorry. There you go. So, anyway, uh, so young males you know teenage males uh, the thing when I was at school at least was everyone would stack up their all their textbooks in their bag and wear it on one shoulder because that's what the cool kids did even though it's really bad for your back and whatnot but then that became the culture because then if the majority of people are wearing their backpack stupidly uh, as in not to help their back but to give them back pain and unbalance them you know they've got 15 20 kilos of books in their bag if you're really tough then you know if you wear your bag properly then you get teased the crap out of so again an interesting thing about culture anyway uh, i am
about to go look for a couple of people. I'm not sure if there's going to be fireworks here. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't appear that there's going to be. There's a lot of people out and about though. And I'll just flip the camera around so you can see. So the northern end of the Surface Paradise Beach, there's not really anyone. But around this part, which is a I guess the main thoroughfare in all of the Gold Coast then there's quite a lot of people there's a lot of Muslims out uh, for some reason uh, like maybe they live nearby I don't know but it does seem interesting uh, as in you know telling their religion from their headwear and there's a Sikh guy probably so, I'll just have a quick walk down Cavill Avenue. You have these cool little tuk-tuk things here and they play music and you pay people to shape you around. There's the famous gates where they used to have the leader maids in their golden bikinis. And often they were tourist girls and, you know, really nice people and they just go there and hope they get tips from people and, you know, they've been paid something presumably from their employer as well. And then, as I said, Warwick Kappa actually became the first meter man, as far as I'm aware. And then they tried introducing more meter men later on after he left but they weren't very popular. So basically it was, you know, you go chat up some beautiful ladies from overseas often, and at least since probably the 1990s, they started being more and more from overseas. But then get a photo with them, something like that, and that way people know you're from Gold Coast. I'd have a sash saying, meet a maid, or welcome to Gold Coast, or whatever. But, you know, people with their political correctness even though really that's exploiting the people that were getting their photos if you want to call it ex exploitation at all really it's you know just people taking a photo as a tourist attraction but anyway uh, it does appear that they have ceased because I've not seen them here for I don't know maybe a year and a half something like that and in the olden days, why the meter maids came about was, let's walk through here first, and let me show this ground. But basically, there were very harsh parking infringements put on in the Gold Coast. And then the Business Owners Association, uh, I think it was maybe with, what was the mayor's name? maybe Bruce Bishop so there's a Bruce Bishop car park but anyway uh, so they just wait so you can hear me uh, so the business association like Chamber of Commerce came up with the idea of feeding you know five cent coins ten cent coins whatever in the meters that were about to expire of people that had non Queensland number plates so ie tourists because otherwise people would, you know, be a bit late and they get a $200 fine or whatever, probably in today's money, because, uh, you know, it might have been a $50 fine back in 1970 or whatever. But you get the idea. So anyway, this is Cavill Avenue. It's like the main strip, the glitter strip of the Gold Coast. And you got the most stinkiest toilets in the world over there. Whether two dudes are hugging each other or one's in a headlock or something. But it's really filthy there. Anyway, so I walk down here and then maybe walk past the nightclubs and then there's bottle shops here. And then bugger off. Kebab shops. You know, some other interesting places. 
in this shopping centre, they have a really cool arcade place, uh, which is Time Zone. And I used to come here when I was a little kid, but it's as expensive as hell now. I went to go there once uh, since moving to the Cold Coast, and I think it was, I don't know, maybe like $100 for a unlimited game, you know, for, I don't know, however many hours it is, session. So instead of paying $5 a game, you just pay like $100 and then you get unlimited, but, you know, it's pretty expensive. We've got the Cavill Avenue tram station here. That'd be pretty fun to be driven around and like, treated like a little party. Just waiting to cross the road here. I'll read some comments. So Paul says, Jesus is going to return soon, John 3.16. Which perhaps you can post uh, the little quote from there. And... He became born again Christian in 2004. There's too many wild, crazy people now and disrespectful to have meter maids, bro. Yeah, so even a couple of years ago when I saw the meter maids, people were treating them nicely. They weren't like pinching them on the bottom or anything like that. They were just, you know, oh, can I get a photo? Sure, give me two bucks. And I'd uh, go get some photos or whatever. And it was women too posing, it wasn't just men and even women just by themselves posing uh, and indeed there's nothing wrong with, with meter mates you know if people don't want to use them then it's fine as in utilize them for a photo yeah and it, it was something different and original to the Gold Coast as well Uh, I'm just going to walk up this side of the street and you get a feel for, you know, the cityscape and the culture in the streets. Hard Rock Cafe is very noisy there. They've got a giant guitar that's cool. Hard Rock Cafe, of course, I think it's the right one, but uh, it was famously owned by Bruce Willis and some other celebrities. Or was that Planet Hollywood, actually? I always mix the two up. There's a lot of homeless people in the Gold Coast, but you know, a lot of people may well disrespect the homeless people, especially, you know, why would you go to a surfing city, blah, blah, blah. But obviously it's a lot better to be homeless if you have to live on the streets in somewhere that's got warm temperatures and somewhere freezing cold. And if you do live near the beach, you do have access generally to you know, at least a shower and some water and you can have a swim. There's a weird looking bike. So you got that big time zone up there. I don't know if you can read it yet, but it's really huge. It goes from, uh, I guess that corner there all the way around uh, it's in the top of the shopping centre and then across from there they also have bowling that I don't think is technically part of the time zone uh, you've got Ben and Jerry's ice cream there as well and they have an interesting story themselves basically from my memory of Ben and Jerry's which I haven't heard for years but it goes something like there are two people that did a mail order course and in how to make ice cream and they thought, hey, look, mm -hmm. every ice cream doesn't really have texture. It's just ice cream, besides maybe chop chip ice cream. So why not make it something different, something interesting? So they ended up being very successful from that. A lot of people do criticise the company for a lot of very left-wing political messages. And I forget some of them exactly, but it's like, you know, boycott this because X, Y, Z or whatever, when sure they can do those things and make 
you know, their political expression known, but a lot of people may think, hey, look, you're supposed to sell ice cream. But really, it would be good to have a balance between the two, if you know what I mean. Because it is legitimate that, you know, sports stars and celebrities and whatever can have a political expression, but then on the other side of the coin, a lot of people, you know, like a particular singer because they sing well and they don't really care about their politics or, you know, anything else. Uh, Paul suggests putting bikinis on the homeless. So there is a man that wears a woman's bikini. Uh, well, I don't know if he identifies as a man, but uh, he's, you see him around this particular part of Surfer's Paradise. Thanks, Paul. Paul says he, he'll call me Lucky RJ. And I hope the video is interesting. Where's Falau? I don't know, but there's a strip club. I've never been to a strip club, but they've got a few here. They've got another one across the road, which is Hollywood Showgirls. It reminds me when I was in Germany, there was, uh, so I went to Germany I don't know, quite a number of years ago now. And I basically only really got to stay around Frankfurt and Maine. So there's two Frankfurts, there's like Big Frankfurt and Little Frankfurt. So I went to Big Frankfurt. And they have the most revolting water that I've ever tasted there. It tasted like, you know, they've got lead in the water or something. Maybe to dumb down the population, who knows. It's Tupac. And I don't know who that other lady is. Uh, so I'll just say about this. Oh, where's the other place? I think I passed another nightclub called Sin City, but maybe they've... Oh, not Sin City. Yeah, Sin City. But maybe they have uh, renamed it. So this is bedroom. You go upstairs there, or downstairs technically, uh, and they've got all these beds there, but I don't know if they have special nights that they rent it out to make special movies or something, but it's different. There's Havana, I've never been in there because I've misplaced my license. Uh, if you... So it's just gonna suggest something maybe. May as well cross around here. So there's just a couple of other shops down there, not really any nightclubs or whatever. They have a heck of a lot of restaurants in this area. You also have, if you go around that corner where the tram station was and keep going, you have the Oasis Shopping Centre, which is pretty cool. And it's a good place to get free parking around Service Paradise. Instead of having to pay for street parking or inevitably there's a, you know, a lot of times of the day when you can't even find a street park. But if you go to the Oasis Centre, then it's a good place to park for free for about three hours. So Joe's Bar and Kitchen. Yeah, there's an Australian flag, two of them. Haven't seen any today, I don't think. Uh, like in any shop windows or whatever. Oh, there's Sin City. It looks like it's closed down. Maybe it's just because of COVID stuff. There's... Service Paradise Police Station. Just read some comments. Yeah, so that's interesting, Paul. So, do you think of yourself as a different person from when you used to, uh, you know, go to strip clubs and brothels? Uh, you brought it up yourself, so that's fine to talk about. Do you find yourself as if, like, you look back on the past and it's like you were someone else? Yeah, so surfers, you know, can be described as trashy and, you know, people can pee on the streets and stuff like that too, which isn't nice to smell when you're walking past, whatever, but it is somewhere interesting and, you know, I guess a lot of people find love in the area too, like, you know, oh, back in 20 years ago, this is where we first met, that kind of thing. 
they've got a little Hawaiian themed uh, or Pacific Island themed little bar really up there uh, I forget its name uh, they used to give you little lays as in plastic versions of a flower necklace and it's a nice little club in there so there's a other strip club And also, before COVID, you know, all of these shops would have probably been open and restaurants. And there was a long time when they were all pretty much closed down. And then they introduced that you could, uh, what would you call that? Like, they turn all these nightclubs into sit-down little gatherings and you probably had to eat food while you were having a drink, otherwise it didn't count and whatnot. <clears throat> So they sometimes have little nightclubs open down here, but then they close down and then they reopen again. Uh, that's called Empire now, but... I think that... Well, I haven't been here for a while. But I'm pretty sure the cocktails used to be on this side and that had a different room, maybe. I can't even remember at the moment. So you got Empire there now and Asylum. So the Asylum was on a downstairs part where I just said about the clubs that came and went. What's the one next to Cocktails? I don't even remember now. I don't go out much. There's Chop Chop. No, that's interesting because Chop Chop's apparently a nickname for marijuana. Uh, this Lost Kingdom is new. They've got like plant theme in there. I've never been in there. Retros. You go downstairs for that. I think I've been there once. But a problem is a lot of these places charge cover fees and I don't like paying for things that I don't think you should have to pay for, like paying for plastic bags or paying for parking, that kind of thing. This is the Avenue. It's quite nice in there. It's like got sit down parts and then, you know, also dancing as well. So quite nice as in the decor and I've never eaten there or anything, but, you know, they've probably got some nice food in there. There's also a lot of little shortcuts through these buildings to get to the beach. So there's another one where the chop chop was. There's another one past the strip club up the road or the two strip clubs. And it's like a quickie mart thing. Yeah, so there's some Australian flags with the sea. Another kebab place. I think that is that the same name as the other kebab place around the corner we went past. No, that's kebab club and the other one has an orange and white sign. But there's time zone again, so it's upstairs. Got cool stairs there too. They light up. Go over there quick. That's pretty cool little TV screen stairs. I haven't seen that before, maybe it's new. Let's go bowling. Anyway, so you get the idea. Uh, you got a Hungry Jacks up there, the McDonald's on the corner. Around the corner there's KFC for those people that like, uh, you know, the traditional American large fast food stores. You got some fancier sort of restaurants there. Love Italy, so presumably it's Italian food. You often have performers here, and they've obviously got one here now. So we'll go have a quick look at what they're doing. I will quickly go over here first. Though. So this is Ripley's Believe It or Not. I haven't been here either. But as you see, there's a great white shark there. There's King Kong. They have lots of 
Well, there's some shark teeth as well. But they have lots of uh, statues there about weird and wonderful things. Like, you know, the guy that had all tattoos to make himself look like a snake or a lizard and then split his tongue and cheetah man and whatever. He's a magician. Let's see if you can work out how he does his tricks. If you succeed at the table pop ball, it's really hard. You get two chances. Try pulling them really fast. Oh, that was, that was really, really close. I get one more go, and I'll have a little bit this time as well. I get a really fast pull. He did it! Woo! Thank you very much for your help. And one more big round of applause for Ben. Thank you very much. And, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it looks really hard. Because it is really hard. Now, if I somehow succeed at the tablecloth pool, please put money in the bag. If the tablecloth pool doesn't work, please put money in the bag. And placing all this stuff is really expensive. Now, if you don't know how much to give, I have a simple method. Simply take $20 out of your wallet, put the $20 note into your pocket, and give me the wallet. Alright, $50 dollars is good. Five or ten is great. Twenty is amazing. And for a hundred, I can make someone disappear. Okay, here we go. Let's get these out of the way. Oops. Actually, I told you all I was going to make this the most amazing thing you've ever seen. So, not only will I pull the giant tablecloth, but at the same time, I will pull the tiny little tablecloth and I'll put the mic on top. I get two tablecloth pulls at the same time. By a round of applause, if this works, who thinks it will be the most amazing thing they've ever seen? Woo! Okay, people. Also, if you don't have any money, I fully understand. Which is why I take credit card. Okay, here we go. Three, two... A -a actually, I, I can't do it. Because it's not amazing enough. I promised you the most amazing thing you've ever seen. I will also put the wine bottle on top, so if I pull just right, it will fall right inside the mug, but it only barely fits, so if I pull even slightly wrong, the whole thing will come crashing down. If anyone wants to video, this is a good time to do so. Just make sure to take me afterwards. Or maybe, maybe if everyone here shifts over to the side, it's going to be a little bit dangerous here in a moment. Yep, that's perfect. Okay, by round of applause, if I succeed, who thinks it will be the most amazing thing they've ever seen? Almost everyone. Okay, we'll try that one final time. By a round of applause, if I succeed, this will be the most amazing thing they've ever seen. I don't know if this is going to work. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, if I pull wrong, I smash everything while I fail in front of you. But it's worth it because if I pull just right, I hope you will always have an amazing memory. And I hope I also leave with an amazing memory. Of my bag full of money, or maybe, maybe just a little bit more. Yeah, that is perfect. Here we go. something else interesting I'll just get away from the music a little bit so you can hear me <laughs> so anyway uh, Heather says it looks trashy like the slums of India I've not been to India but I've been to Sri Lanka for a day and that was interesting there was a cow eating a dead dog on the rat road so that was fun and there are also all these little squirrels and we're in a hotel in Negombo that the literature on the plane actually said Negombo not Colombo is the capital of Sri Lanka and all these little squirrels were climbing I don't know six stories high and going on our balcony and they were so cute but I wanted to pat them 
But then the other side of the argument was that they were running through filth all day. There are rubbish absolutely everywhere. And one other interesting thing was you had these big interesting waves at the beach. And I say they're interesting because it looked like India just pumps down their sewage down to Sri Lanka. It was just like, you know, a giant sewer there. But anyway, all comments are appreciated, so long as they aren't, you know, terrible ones or whatever. So Paul says it's still like the 90s atmosphere, kind of. Yeah, so back in the 90s and probably even in the 2000s and the 80s too, I guess, and the 70s probably as well, uh, Queenslanders used to have a thing where all the men had moustaches, pretty much. So that's one interesting change. If everyone here had moustaches, all the men, then it would look even more like the 80s. You know? And I've got my 80s style Hawaiian shirt, so, Paul got put in a police station pod building for not having ID and whatever else. Uh, I was arrested live on Facebook for Tinler 150 based on false allegations. And then I was interrogated for hours too. And I haven't been charged. Luckily I had filmed evidence of what I said was true. And it was. And the, the other person was lying so that was interesting and that was the third time that that person has had me arrested since 29 December and you know things all come out in time about that so that was my experience sort of in a police pot if you want to call it that being in a paddy wagon and then cut it off to the station and that was what maybe two weeks ago or something Anyway, if I had a hundred bucks to throw in for you, Paul, then I'll still keep it myself. But, you know, it's, it's good to encourage and help the buskers. They do have to pay for a busking license to perform here. And back in the olden days, uh, especially this is like the last day of school holidays, uh, for Queensland at least, this would have been packed and there'd be, you know, hundreds of people watching the live performer and I'd have multiple live performers that have certain allocated spots so probably where's a good way to explain that so if I just zoom in that looks not very good but see where that man's walking they often have a musician there and then also down here there's often like where the bike rider is but off to the side a little bit like a dude playing his didgeridoo uh, they do have different performers but I think it's generally a theme so they'll have a magician you know guy on stilts juggling swords that kind of thing but this week they had the guy doing the tablecloth trick so when you pull a tablecloth make sure it doesn't have a seam on the other end and as in it's, it has oops, it has to slide under like all of the stuff that's on top of the table plates cutlery wine bottles whatever has to slide under the tablecloth and you pull down when you're doing it and really jerk it and then the thing should stay there because things in motion tend to stay in motion and things at rest tend to stay at rest or however the official scientific explanation is normally for it. but anyway so just quickly check if there's any particular comments that I've missed so sin paradise yeah but you know yeah you know, probably won't get into a debate on my philosophy or on religions and stuff like that in this video but Yeah, so anyway, uh, that'll do me. Uh, as I said, the point of this video is to please put down in the comments uh, what you have done for Australia Day, what you think of Australia Day, if you want to divulge that. And then also the big question is, 
Where is Lucky Lance? He seems to have disappeared off of Facebook. And does it have anything to do with his upcoming criminal trials? And perhaps for his little hate group that he has, uh, misnomed or misnamed the, what is it, calling out all scammers, that maybe they should find out why Lucky, if he hasn't disclosed to him, to them, uh, why he's facing criminal charges, and that is not a intervention order, that is actual criminal charges with potential years in prison. And a reference number for that, or the file number, is K1315039090. And that's going to be at Moorabbin, Moorabbin, how you pronounce it, probably Moorabbin, Magistrates Court on the 19th of April 2021. Uh, so far, it may well be adjourned, who knows. But, <clears throat> sorry I'm losing my voice again. <clears throat> but, anyway, he is facing criminal charges and, you know, perhaps some other people in his little crew uh, such as Manoli, whose real name is Emmanuel, may well have similar charges coming soon, uh, as with his brother Jimmy Peckless. Uh, so Manoli Peckless and Jimmy Peckless may well have similar charges coming soon. So, and it is the correct Lance Lee Simon being represented by Guard Wilson Lawyers, uh, which of course is his wife's law firm. So anyway, time to bugger off. I'll do one last showing of, you know, the crowd so you get an idea of the atmosphere. And then it's time for me to go. Please like, share, subscribe, and cheerio. Bye.